going to talk about this at all. I'm instead just going to remind you of the point that BMI teaches us. That artist choice is the key for new technology having an opportunity to be open for business. And we need to build artist choice here if these new technologies are to have that opportunity. But let me end with something I think much more important. Much more important than business. It's the point about how this connects to our kids. We have to recognize they are different from us. This is us, right? <laughs> we made mixed tapes, they remixed music. We watched TV, they make TV. It is technology that has made them different. And as we see what this technology can do, we need to recognize you can't kill the instinct the technology produces. We can only criminalize it. We can't stop our kids from using it. We can only drive it underground. We can't make our kids passive again. We can only make them, quote, pirates. And is that good? We live in this weird time, this kind of age of prohibitions, where in many areas of our life, we live life constantly against the law. Ordinary people live life against the law. And that's what I, we are doing to our kids. They live life knowing they live it against the law. That realization is extraordinarily corrosive, extraordinarily corrupting. And in a democracy, we ought to be able to do better, do better at least for them, if not for opening for business. Thank you very much. The 1980s was a decade of mass unemployment, football violence, a government that liked to portray itself as tough and crack down on everybody and everything. It was a decade of business failures and lots and lots of empty warehouses. <laughs> My motivation was to fucking make it happen, make sure it happened all night long, make sure it happened free or as cheap as possible. If it was anything, we would have done anything for it to happen. I remember one situation where I was handed a piece of wire, okay, strip this, put it into our block, start your stopwatch, you've got five minutes because there's someone on the other end who's going to find a powerpoint and plug it on the mains, which is sometimes a lamppost, or something like that, you've got five minutes to plug this in because then you're going to have live current on that end. Well, you well, get surprised. <laughs> <laughs> From the certain weight of people actually in the warehouse or on the property, that was it. The police must have had a mandate to say, listen, leave it, just let it happen at that point, and uh, you did. Where's the revolution? Here. It started up maybe 50 people. Six months down the line was 5,000. Nine months down the line was 10,000. But you could still tell if somebody was missing. For people inside, for people involved in the parties, they were something beautiful. You know, they were something special. But on the outside, it was not seen like that at all. They were viewed with a mixture of uh, incomprehension and fear. They were like us in the same thing, they were just like this before in the night, ever. So, as much as we were joy, but they were probably pain, but they were just, you know, as, as much as we thought it was like the future, the hope, the dreams, they thought, it's fucking judgment day. MPs spent most of Friday delving into the murky world of acid house parties. The Home Office Minister said the bill would help deal with the evil and corrupt men who preyed on young people. Well, 
that was a revelation. People started realizing it. I don't need this stuff in the fucking hardly pound a month job, you know, so that I can afford one night out a week. It's happening here and I'm going to be part of it. The government is giving the police new powers to break up rave parties. Home Office Minister said the measures were needed to protect communities from what he called appalling invasions. We got to a stage where we had problems getting systems supporting the raves because they were pressuring the higher companies at that point in time and threatening them, saying basically if we find your equipment in any of these things, you're not going to get it back in one piece. We had one or two situations, didn't we, like buying speakers in Darwin mm. and the guy was extremely suspicious and he'd been approached by police as to who he was selling it to. He'd want to write receipts out and he'd want a name and blah 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 and they said, oh no, we don't want a receipt, it doesn't matter. He didn't really want to sell us it because he thought he would get into trouble. people were arrested last night when police broke up an asset house party at a warehouse near Leeds. Three policemen were slightly injured. That's heart-wrenching it was because it was everything you believed in, everything you dreamed of, it was your whole life, you could your whole life waking and sleeping and hallucinogenic dreaming, everything. But then suddenly, boom. Everything starts with an E. Oh, it's only 